I found this as being held hostage. I could not move for over 40 minutes. Not the first time it's happened, now the city of Madison is taking action. Good evening, I'm Eric Franke. First tonight at 10, Madison Mayor Paul Soglin wants changes from the Wisconsin Southern Railroad. News 3 investigative reporter Adam Schrager is on the story. And Adam, the mayor calls the situation at these local crossings, quote, horrendous. Eric, he wants a meeting with the railroad's new owners to fix the problem. And while a 40 minute delay may be the outlier, the mayor says there have been numerous reports of 15 to 30 minute holdups, costing Madisonians thousands of dollars. If you've ever called Madison Streets Division to complain, you must respond and listen to complaints. You may have spoken to Sue Aiello. Something's got to be done. Now, though, she's the one with the complaint, and she's frustrated with her response. They kind of poo-pooed my, my complaint. It was April 9th, just after 2 o'clock, when this 131-car Wisconsin Southern train passed by the John Nolan and Broom Street intersection, and Sue Aiello left work driving down East Wash toward the Capitol to get to a doctor's appointment. When the railroad gates went down. Everybody just turns their head and sits there and waits. And waits. The train started to go through. It stopped. And there was about a 10 minute stoppage. The Madison police camera at their fleet services station at First and Johnson first shows cars stopped at 225. You can see the timestamp at the bottom of the screen. It would inch along, about six cars would go across, and it would stop again for 10 minutes. Another look at the camera shows the traffic still stuck at 235, and then offers a different angle through the trees of a train stopped on the track at 248. A squad car next to me finally gave up and jumped the boulevard. That would be patrol officer Megan Rogers. She filed the police report over the incident. I was stopped here on the bridge for over 40 minutes. Wait a minute, seriously, that long? 45 minutes, I could have driven to Milwaukee and saw a doctor. The city's absolutely frustrated with uh, dealing with these crossing problems. Steve Brist is Madison's assistant city attorney who deals with railroad regulation. It's just unreasonable to think that people are going to sit for 15, 20, 30, 50 minutes and wait for uh, a train. The city council agreed decades ago and passed an ordinance prohibiting the gates from being down for more than five minutes. We investigated the last two weeks' worth of video from the city cameras focused on the railroad crossing near John Nolan and Broom Street. That's where an off-duty Madison police sergeant claimed she'd been stuck in March for 19 minutes. We witnessed examples of short trains, like on May 1st, that kept the gates down for only a minute. But more than half of the time, we saw examples like one on May 7th, where the timestamp on the bottom of the screen indicated a train closing the intersection for 10 minutes. That happened again on May 9th. 18 times in all the gates went down over the last two weeks. 10 times they stayed down too long per Madison ordinance. I can believe that. I can believe that they'd be in violation of the ordinance more than five minutes. So why have there been no citations issued to the railroad over the last decade? I feel almost the word would be legally impotent, impotent I think, to, 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 to try to enforce these regulations that have been preempted by federal law. Court decisions back up the federal authority, giving railroads recent power over the crossings. I think they're in a position where they're going to do it if they can keep doing it. Unless you think Steve Brist would fight anything having to do with the railroad. <laughs> Actually, I'm not anti-train. I uh, am a model railroader. Ken Lucht of Wisconsin Southern apologized for the April 9th incident for what he called a, quote, unusual and isolated circumstance saying the railroad couldn't park a train that long in the yard. As for the future, he wrote, quote, railroad officials are working to develop a different plan to handle the longer and more frequent trains here in Madison. We need them to deal with it faster. Brist says it's a public safety issue and that downtown Madison's on an isthmus. So for example, if the roads in from the east are closed, how does an ambulance get to any of the city's main hospitals? And the problem is there just aren't alternative routes. If you block Johnson Street and you block East Washington, there's no good way to get downtown. I was right in here. Sue Aiello gets frustrated every time she thinks about April 9th. I'm a stickler for rules, and if I have to follow rules, I believe everyone should. And the end result of that 45-minute gridlock. Needless to say, I missed my doctor's appointment. And now I can't get in till the end of July.
So if the railroad doesn't take action, Soglin says he's already started conversations with the U.S. Conference of Mayors that could possibly lead to congressional action. And we started working on this story when Sue Aiello contacted our call for action volunteers. She wanted someone to do something. Eric, it appears she's been pretty successful so yeah, far. Sue is somebody who clearly gets things done, and nice job on that story. So the video is amazing. I mean, the, the cameras, they do not lie. Can you imagine being stuck for 40 no, minutes? No, I, I don't know what I'd do. But Wouldn't be fun. No. Adam, thank you very much. Thank Good you. reporting there.